Welcome, everybody. Here we are today at, on a beautiful, sunny fall day, the day after Thanksgiving Monday. Can't believe how gorgeous it is. This is really the Indian summer. Yes. Yes, that we're celebrating here at Tucker House, which many of you might know about, and those of you who don't really have to discover. I'm here at Tucker House, which is on Tucker Road at 1731, with Kara Stonehouse, who is the executive director of this wonderful place with big dreams for the future. Thank you, Kara. Thank you so much for doing the show with us. Well, thank you. It's really a pleasure. Well, we're going to have a lot to talk about, and I think we're going to... Ha There's so much going on in this place, which I last visited about five years ago. It's absolutely exciting to think of all the projects that you've got on the go that not just dreaming but actually happening yes. with a lot of help from Trillium I understand yes and the Ontario Trillium Foundation really supports us and for yes. many years now yeah. oh that's good they yeah. do a lot of good things and I'm glad that we've given them an opportunity to show their kindness and imagination so here we are in front of the um, of this house, which can you tell us a little brief history about it? Belonged to a family, I believe. Yeah, the Tucker family were some of the early entrepreneurs and settlers of this area when it was called uh, Clarence Creek. And mm -hmm. they were a real entrepreneurial family. They had a cheese shop, the general store, the bank, the timber yard. They just, they did it all. They sold their cheeses to France. Um, they really figured out how to, um, um, they're, they're, they're really good entrepreneurs, and they were also very generous back to their community. So they had the, they were Baptists in faith, and they um, actually built this house for their children. Stephen mm -hmm. uh, Tucker Jr. lived here, and when they were didn't want to live there anymore, they um, turned it into a retreat center for the Baptist church. So, when was this all in the 1900s, 1800s? Yeah, 1800s. Know? The house was built around 1870. Um, and this was the road was leading to Montreal. So a Montreal architect um, came and built it in the Georgian style, and it was uh, designed to impress. Yeah. Oh well. All right. I'm going to have to. <laughs> this house was built in 1870 by the Tucker family as a gift for the children, and it was all made from local materials. So in that way, it's an inspiration um, about what's possible. The clay was um, was collected on site, and the bricks the bricks were dried on site and you can even see um, little cat paws in the bricks um, where the cats walked over the drying clay. Um, the pine is local white pine making the beams and the windows were made in Montreal. House right now that is not used for living purposes it's where people where you have conferences and seminars and things of that sort right? Yeah in 2005 we became an environmental charity because mm -hmm. the people who were working here were working together to make community gardens and caring more for the earth and trying to um, and helping to people to learn about their spirituality and how those things connect together to make mm -hmm. a better world so we became a charity in 2005 and we still run it as a retreat center so local businesses can rent it out for their special events um, lots of scouts groups uh, rent it out for their overnight stays. There's a campfire and a pool in the back and um, business groups have their dinners here and the uh, people come to learn for a week about um, nonviolent communication with uh, Gina Chinkose. So, oh wonderful. Yeah. Wow. Let's take it to the back now and see a little bit of that. Is the pool, I guess the pool is closed for the winter. Yes. But we can still see the fire pit? Yes. All right. And our, and our trees. Okay. Let's go there. So here we are in the backyard pretty spacious backyard I would say and it was all built like this by the original family with open space so that the community could come here I imagine for their gatherings and the traditions carried on as you were saying with the scouts yes and weddings yes I think uh, mostly since it's been a retreat center then it's been like that mm -hmm. and we also have people um, using the space for weddings so the building back there has been decorated with flowers to be a, a chapel and then the family can sit around the campfire at night and sometimes we have storytellers come in and they have an instrument and picture a sky full of stars and oh, uh, yeah can imagine it. it must be beautiful so here you've got the fire pit and you provide the wood and the benches all around and I'm just going to go behind the camera to show all of the different amenities that you have here, the building and the, um, the solar panels, because I think the, um, the fact that you've got these solar panels is probably a, a, a very good follow through on what was originally intended to be uh, very nature friendly and environmentally friendly yes. operation. 
Yeah, I'm, at Maison Tucker House, our real mission is to inspire sustainable living. So having the, at Tucker House, our um, mission is to inspire sustainable living. So having those solar panels is a great example of um, something that's ecological by making energy for the grid as well as well as um, financially sustainable, so it, they're bringing in money to to run the center every year. So that's um, so that's the kind of message we want to get out to people and let them know that these sorts of things are not so hard to do by being a demonstration center and having people come and look at the house and look at the eco renovations we've done and the eco renovations we're starting to do now um, to revitalize the interior of the house as well as some of the um, outdoor learning spaces. Yeah, this is an outdoor learning uh, space. So the children will, um, Country Fund Nature Camp is a camp that runs two weeks of the year. Every year it's been going on um, since 1960. And uh, will come, the children will be in small groups and they'll meet in different spaces around, uh, around the campus to um, talk about the lessons of the day to mentor each other, uh, practice their leadership skills. So this is one of the spaces where they'll go to um, get out of the sun and have some of those discussions about what they've been learning about the environment and care for creation and care for each other. And um, yeah, just I kind of make sure I come every year to get to be part of Country Fun Nature Camp because it just the energy is infectious and um, it's just such a well loved camp and the the children um, it really means something to them. Like uh, we are. Uh, we're teaching the values of uh, having an eco heart um, and then we're teaching them the information so that they're eco smart and then we build we have the community space so people can get together collaborate make projects happen and that's where we make an eco start so that's kind of our approach um, at Tucker House to make a difference to make a social change towards sustainability um, and the Country Fund campers, I just wanted to share one of the reflections from one of the campers just to show you how much um, love is here for them. It's, this is by uh, JP. Um, Country Fund holds a lot of meaning for me. I've attended for over a decade now, half my life. It was my first camp experience, something that I looked forward to each year. As a city kid, it taught me many things about nature beyond what I had learned in school. It's one thing to learn about animals and trees in the class, but it's another thing to actually see and interact with them. Although at times I've failed to recycle and sometimes left the lights on, one thing that has stuck with me from camp is the idea of environmental sustainability. Though I wouldn't have called it that as a camper, protecting the environment came in the form of activities and games. From crafts made of recycled materials to songs about preventing pollution, my love for the environment started because it was fun. What brings me back each year is the people. I've made lifelong friends, some of whom still help with the camp. Camp gave me an opportunity to be myself in a safe and caring environment. From the enthusiastic leaders to my fellow campers, each friend I've made has helped shape who I am today. Yeah, so that's the kind of... Yeah, yeah, the kind of heart we've got. So he was a camper for all those years, and then he was director of the camp this year. And uh, just in making new connections, helping more children come who couldn't come before, um, for financial constraints, by getting uh, partnerships with other um, organizations, and uh, make, building new networks and getting more fundraising for the camp. Yeah, well, there's a bus that goes out each day from um, downtown Ottawa and makes three stops and then comes out to Tucker House and takes them home um, in the afternoon. Yeah. Let's have a look at the solar panels. So part of the being eco-smart is um, there are workshops that we run on being energy smart and understanding how renewable energy works. Um, so these panels are creating 15 um, kilowatts of energy to the electronic, to the grid. Um, they don't actually run Tucker House. For that, we've got Bullfrog Power. Um, it's just the way that the system works. We have a contract with the Ontario government, and we provide electricity to the grid, and they give us um, a discount on our electricity bill. And they were put in in 2011, 
and they just go generating electricity every year. We can see our, our clock running, running backwards, our meter running backwards, and that just feels good um, to support the center. And also knowing that um, every time that electricity is made using the sun without burning fossil fuels, that there's that much less uh, CO2 going into the atmosphere, carbon dioxide, which we know um, causes global warming. And when we see things like um, the not being enough sea ice in the ocean and all the walruses have to come to shore because they have nowhere to live and they're all packed in or the polar bears have to swim twice as long as before and they're losing their habitat we know that this is really important and also when the weather um, changes and we have more floods and more um, variable weather happening we know that these are some impacts from from climate change and it makes it harder for us to grow our food to live comfortably um, so it really affects our lives directly, not just polar bears. Um, and sometimes a lot of this information can be a downer that you get from environmental groups like, oh, please don't tell me about all the terrible things that are happening that I have no control over. But that's why at Tucker House we take a really positive approach, like you saw with the Country Fun uh, Nature Camp, where we talk about the values, we help people get informed, and we make uh, community collaboration groups that make it fun to get involved and to have to take action. So it's, um, it's, it's soul rising rather than fear producing or soul depleting. And that's really important to us and I think that's the way that we can um, build a better future together. Well, Kara, that's uh, absolutely fantastic. You don't even need me to interview you. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we've seen the outside, and much as it would be wonderful to stay out here because it was such a gorgeous day and there won't be many more of these, we're going to go inside, take a look at Tucker House. Yeah, I want to tell you about the big project we have for the revitalization of the retreat center. We're really excited about this. All right. Yeah. Well, let's go inside, and we're going to take a break right now, and we'll be right back afterwards. We'll have moved into this beautiful old home with, oh, some beautiful antiques and decorations and lots of inspiration. Bingo! Oh no, Marco Twigs! Bingo! TV Bingo, live from the TVC22 studio every Sunday nights at 7.15 on TVC22 or on the internet at www.tvc22.ca. Full Tucker House, once again with Kara Stonehouse, the executive director, who has just shown us the outside grounds, and now we're sitting in here like a couple of young ladies might have done once upon a time. So they're sitting here gossiping while somebody's in the kitchen cooking. Who knows? I don't know. It makes you fantasize being in a place like this, doesn't it? Yes, I could be doing some needlework on a fancy pillow or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Needlepoint, yes. How on earth did they find the time to do that back in those days when they had so much to do on the land and it took so long to get around? And it's hard to imagine that they actually had all that time and less light because they didn't have electricity back then, eh? Yeah, that's right. Um, they had to be creative, uh, uh, work pretty hard. Um, the children spent time um, going to school. They had a schoolroom upstairs in the building, and they would entertain a lot because they were a well-to-do family. And they did have servants, so that um, so they didn't have uh, too hard of a life. Um, but you know, their water they um, they don't have running water like we do today. But they've figured out ingenious ways, like having a rainwater system. Oh, so they had rain, rain barrels or. They had barrels on the roof, or yeah, they collected some on the roof and then and then uh, washed it down uh, using gravity feed to get when they open up the uh, tap to get some water. Well, most people these days don't even know how their houses run. They turn on the tap, they turn on the ignition to their car. They haven't a clue. They flick the light switch and not a clue as to where it's coming from. Now, you had mentioned when we were out there something about um, bullfrog electricity. Oh, yeah. I've never heard of that. Yeah, um, so Bullfrog Electricity is a, a company who really cares about having renewable energy. And so what they do is they work to make new, put new, electric, new renewable energy projects into the grid. So they'll build solar panels, they'll build larger scale windmill um, developments and that sort of thing. And then what they um, offer to companies like us or to homeowners is to say, um, purchase from us the 
our energy, the bullfrog energy. So you pay, you do pay a, pay a premium on your on top of your energy bill every month. But what you're doing is paying for that green energy to happen, and you're being proud that you're being a supporter of the new economy, of the new um, the new way we're going to build the world um, that's going to work for people and for the planet. I love hearing talk like that. Honestly, it's <laughs> something that I never heard as a kid. I would hear my father talk about the need to. Um, be responsible, save water. He would <laughs> double bag his plastic bags from the grocery store. <laughs> but beyond that, all of this, this is a whole new world. There's so much to learn. So that's why I guess the seminars that you hold here are so useful because they cover those things. Yeah, absolutely. We've got uh, we've a few different themes of um, getting energy smart is a really good one to explain where your energy comes from, how you can reduce it, some of the resources that are available uh, to you that you might not have known about um, to reduce your energy consumption, to, to learn how much you're using, and then, then you, can, you can use that to help you reduce. And there's programs where you can compare with your neighbors mm -hmm. um, and make it fun like that. So. Um, we teach about all those things and um, and then we love the eco home renovation that's another workshop that we do because um, we did a eco reno of our kitchen and bathrooms in 2011 uh -huh. um, which included the solar panel installation and um, so then we share about what we learned through that and how other people can can do the same so housings are um, a big portion of the energy energy use of in people's lives so if you can make your house green you can make your uh, life green yeah. And you can help the planet. Now, what about the work that's being done here? You mentioned that there's some renovation coming up, and it's thanks to funding from Trillium. Yeah. Perhaps uh, other sources, too? Yes. Yeah, we have a big vision um, to make this place more of a hands-on demonstration and learning center for um, for sustainable living. So part of that is um, making the retreat center very attractive to more uh, more user groups, so um, community groups in Rockland, um, business groups in Rockland, and even further afield, inviting more tourism from um, international interests and, um, and across Canada. Um, so what part of that is um, Trillium Ontario Children Foundation has given us some funding to look at our business model. Um, to we're looking at ourselves more as a social enterprise. So we're a business, but our purpose is like a social good. So being um, helping the environment and helping uh, make jobs and that sort of thing. Um, so there, that's really important for us that we're not just using the retreat center to make money. We're using the retreat center to make a difference, but it does take mm -hmm. some does take some money to do. So yeah, so we'll be hiring a decorator soon and uh, ripping up the walls of some new electrical, and uh, we'd want to invite you along to, to see some of that journey with us. Absolutely. Yeah. We will be here. You can count on it, because this is something that everybody can learn from. There are a lot of old houses in Clarence Rockland that could probably benefit from this. Probably not too many of them could benefit from Trillium funding, yeah. but there must be government programs that are available to them, and certainly there are savings to be had, and we'll learn more about that perhaps in the next episode. Sure. Yes. <laughs> Now tell me, um, this is all beautiful antique molding that you don't see much anymore. I, I'm going to turn the camera up, up there so that people can see. I don't know what you call it. When, when they're scary figures, they're gargoyles. When they're angels, I don't know what they're called, but they're mm -hmm. definitely beautiful. Yeah, on the ceiling, it's a ceiling rose, which is mm -hmm. beautiful. And um, these ornaments, um, I forget their name specifically, but I think we're going to put even more gold uh, gilding on them because that was part of the the showiness of, uh, okay. of the family. So. Okay. Now, are these the Tuckers, the original Tuckers? Yes. That uh, actually looks like Queen Victoria up there. So, but the, um, the original Tuckers were um, Lucy and Stephen, and mm -hmm. their pictures we can show um, are by the door, okay. and then their children uh, was Stephen Tucker Jr., who lived here with their um, children and his mm -hmm. wife. All right. So. The last time that this place was occupied as a family home, do you happen to know when that was? Um, not exactly. I mm. think it was around, um, oh, you know what? I don't know. <laughs> no? But certainly it's been, it's, been, it's been a part of the community for many years. Everybody yeah. knows about Tucker House. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they've helped build the community in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, and also the fact that it's now, uh, well, People know it as different things, but certainly as a kind of a retreat or a place where they hold seminars. And now, I guess, since you've been the executive director more and more and more, because you're young and full of energy, even though... 
<laughs> yeah, well, we're really... You're a mother with a babe in arms. <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, yeah, we're, we have a great board of directors, so these are all volunteer people from the community, some from Ottawa, some from Rockland, um, who who give their time every month, um, who put on the fantastic Green Gala every fall, um, or it's a masquerade or an enchanted woods. And When is that? Um, that we just had that one for this year, in uh, just two weeks ago. Oh, but we might be, um, but we'll be looking forward to pr most likely in the spring when we're done the renovation to have a bit of a, um, a celebration to show it off to the community. So we'll we'll have details on that as it as it completes. Yeah. All right. And you generally advertise these in the Vision on online. Is there a website for Tucker House? How yeah, for sure at uh, Maison Tucker House dot ca um, you can join our mailing list and then there's a button right there join the mailing list and then you'll get those updates um, about the awesome programs they're running the stories uh, like i read about the uh, country fund nature camp mm -hmm. and then events that are coming up and opportunities to volunteer so there'll be mm -hmm. chances to come and help paint and be part of the um, part of the history and the and the future going forward of uh, mm -hmm. tucker house yeah. i suppose it's been some time since tucker house has been able to actually make money but it's not inconceivable that it could reach that point because this is really a unique treasure in Clarence Rockland. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love pulling on, I loved learning about how entrepreneurial the Tuckers were. Mm -hmm. um, and we do make some money at the Treat Center now, but we just really want to open it up more to the community and have more people come and more activity because there's some, there's opportunity for that. And it has a really special um, soul to it, like Tucker House, like wants to help the community. You know, like mm -hmm. it wants to be full of life and um, and things happening and creating the the future. So. Mm -hmm. And it's not so big that it's impossible to imagine it happening because I'm sure those who have been involved with Tucker House think of Cumberland Village and mm -hmm. um, even going beyond that to Upper Canada Village and certainly. Around here, it's beautifully built up, and we're not going to spread out too far, but still, to recreate something from once upon a time and add the new technology, it's, it's exciting. Yeah, we're envisioning like green building workshops, so making a hay bale office for ourselves and uh, cabins and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, um, the kids who come here from school, they obviously, most of the population around here is Francophone, so are there programs in French as well or only in English? Yeah, we're a bilingual organization, um, and so we have school groups come for a nature walk and the workshops in French as well as English. So we'll be right back after this uh, commercial break and for a beautiful tour of this beautiful house. The Clarence Rockland Town Council Assembly plenary meetings are there to inform you on all items submitted for approval, such as zoning, development, taxes and laws, discussions, debates, confrontations, Mayor Marcel Guibard and his councillors are there to inform you on subjects that affect you. Don't miss the Town Council plenary meetings on TVC22 or on the internet at www.tvc22.ca. In the parlor we can see this beautiful archway that would have had double doors um, separating perhaps an office space and an entertaining area which they could they could close the doors um, to save heat or they could open them up for more um, if more people were visiting and or close it off to hide the office and just have the nicer um, section showing in the front you could see that there's this decorative rose on one half of the ceiling and not the other which indicates that maybe this was the back end was more for business and the uh, front of the house was more for entertaining Um, and also, if um, someone, we believe someone in the Rockland community might have these double doors, and if we, if we would like to bring them back to us, um, we'd be interested in that, to, um, to bring that, um, that function back to us, to, so perhaps we can use the back side for the office um, in coming years. Um, this uh, fireplace is part of our eco-design. Um, we had to close the real fireplace um, just for um, health and safety reasons, but this is actually an electric uh, fireplace. So it's just, um, it's natural gas run actually. So it's, um, the house used to run on oil, which was very expensive and is a, um, not as good for the environment and uses a lot of it. So changing to natural gas, um, it's still a fossil fuel um, 
but we use less, so that's a little bit better. Um, and then it's a bit safer just because it's um, not a real flame in the public place. Let's see what else here. Um, originally, they would have been heated by a coal, four coal and wood burning fireplaces, which were later replaced by the oil furnish system. Um, and so um, when we updated to natural gas, um, we're saving about $2,000 a year, improves our carbon uh, footprint by about 10,000 kilograms of carbon dioxide, and, um, makes, and, it's, still, and it's cozy in the house. <laughs> yes, it's, there's three layers of brick in the house, so that keeps the, if it's cool, it stays cool, and if it's warm, it stays warm. Um, it's of the period for sure. This is a, I can't remember the name, um, but it is a, a, like an original of that time. Mm -hmm. um, I think these are called Queen Anne type legs. It's a Georgian style, and you would see um, furniture simil similar to this at a Buckingham Palace. from here. So Kara, I, I, it was interesting what you mentioned about the missing doors and some of this furniture and this room is rather sparsely furnished and the dining room next door is, has got some old furniture, some new furniture, some nothing furniture, <laughs> <laughs> surplus furniture. <laughs> and I suppose the call has been put out to the community that if they had anything that they would like to donate in, in estate sales or wills that you'd be more than happy to take them because obviously this is a museum, isn't it? Um, it's not quite a museum, but we are just going to keep up the historical charm of it as it's a retreat center because people can rent it all throughout the year. Um, but it is demonstrating some of that history. So we're making a wish list that we're going to post on our website and then it'll show the kinds of things that we're looking for. Um, and then if you notice that you have that and would like to donate, we would love that for sure. Yeah. What a great idea. Yeah, we're looking for a four-post bed um, chandeliers um, and um, any beds of a Georgian style if there's a spindle um, style bed frame or um, anything from the sort of 1700s, 1800s, early 1800s, late 1800s, yeah. Oh, wow. And you know what? They're all going to show up. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> now tell me, there's some, there are some documents or some materials in the Rockland Museum yeah, you mentioning to me? yeah, Gilles Chartrain just loves the history of this area and when he came up to see some of the artifacts in the attic, he just got so excited, he said, oh my gosh, we have to show this to the people. Mm -hmm. um, so we found a, a really uh, gorgeous map from um, 1862 and it was a map of Upper Canada, which was what, I don't think it was Quebec and Ontario yet at that time. And so it's a hand-drawn map and that's on display um, at the museum right now, so um, we can we can have a peek at that. Yeah. And um, also there were children's uh, literature and uh, from the school and some lots of old receipts from their business that they were doing and blueprints of the house. So we're putting some of those things together in some displays in the room. So uh, that's going to be nice to tell the story. As people come and stay, they can get the feeling of what was going on in the past. What is it about these old things that excites us so much? That oh, to us so much? Yeah, everyone who comes and just says, "I love old houses." It's just, oh, I think, I think when um, when things are handmade, when um, when a soul's been put into it, we just we just see that and feel that, and it it, it wakes up our soul a little bit. Um, and I think it just resonates with something uh, really human inside of us. And, I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. And that's probably one of the reasons why we love walking in certain forests so much. Because you can feel the soul of the, the original natives, perhaps, who walked through there. Wow, yeah. And it's, it's all around us. And it's so easy to forget with all the new construction. But I love that you mention that. Because not everybody thinks that way. But once they do start realizing it, a light goes on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just, it's a matter of taking some time to slow down, to rejuvenate, to take, take some time like that every day. Yes. And uh, sometimes you need a special space to come away to, uh, to clear the clutter. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the real gifts that Tucker House can offer. Yeah. Absolutely. And this beautiful 
architecture that's here, the, the decoration, and how fortunate that it's never burnt down because there are so many buildings that have. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Even our church, is the, well, the Catholic church has burnt down about two or three times since the original one was built. Okay. Each time they had to rebuild it. and. Okay, I didn't even know we were so lucky. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I assume that it hasn't burned down because I don't think they would have rebuilt it with all of this incredible intricate detail. Yeah, there's lots of signs of the wear through the ages without uh, any burning signs, so uh -huh. I'd say. So, if people want to see Tucker House, do they have to make an Can they come by making an appointment, or do they have to organize something? Yeah, it's better if something's organized if you come to a, an event that we're hosting or you're renting the facility, because if you just show up, someone else might be renting it for their private retreat, so okay. it wouldn't be good to just knock on the door. Um, but eh, sometimes if, um, the white cottage next door is, is the groundskeeper, so you can knock on um, his door for a tour if you're, if you're yeah. interested in that, but maybe better to call ahead. <laughs> oh, usually better to call ahead, of course. Yeah. So, although it's not a museum, you are trying to stay as open and accessible as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and it's wonderful to have the groundskeeper on site, on ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Kara, I think that this has been a wonderful introduction to what's hopefully going to be at least one, possibly two more shows about Tucker House, because I definitely feel that this is uh, a treasure of our community, and it's right here amidst all of us and easily accessible. And it's a place where people can just come at least and walk around the grounds, even if they can't come into the building. Um, mm. It's not open to the public just for not a walk at this time, but like okay. when you're renting it, then you're then you're using it then for a nice nature walk and that. But we're 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 looking at different ideas, like maybe there's certain Sundays we can open for public walks and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. But, mm -hmm. I think it has a lot of. I think it's about to blossom. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that energy's yeah. uh, rising in buildings. So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think its time has come. Yeah. So we're going to close the show here. Okay. And next week, hopefully, we'll be back and we'll meet some of the decorators. And Jean-Claude, I believe you mentioned, are going to be here. Yes. And they won't mind talking to the Clarence Rockland public, will they? No, Jean-Claude, for sure. I'm not sure. For sure. Um, and we might have our eco-contractor in as well, Michael. And All right. um, I'm not sure about the decorator at this point. Though. OK, well, you warn them. We'll have okay. lots of questions. <laughs> OK, thanks. Thank you so much, Kara. OK. And thank you so much for watching, and please stay tuned for next week's wonderful follow-up. And have a wonderful... <laughs>
all these things. But she helps us to um, to like take heart, you know, and take hope, and and decide how we can take some action. And so through those uh, workshops that we did with her, um, I felt my heart really opened up and really freed and um, I took a commitment you know to say yes I'm going to when I get back to uh, Canada I'm going to take a stand and I'm going to do the work that matters for the world and that's how I want to spend my life you know that's where my energy is best used um, so I'm just totally inspired and on fire that Tucker House um, is this environmental education facility with this gorgeous retreat center that we can host similar um, events at to help other people have this kind of opening, uh, breaking open experience and commitment to action. Um, and that's, that's what drives me and uh, that's how I help inspire the staff as well. We use um, information as well as heart-centered things like poetry and um, and focusing on the soul as well because this was um, Tucker House was owned by the Baptists first it has a spiritual um, history and we're mm -hmm. continuing that we're continuing that tradition um, opening to all faiths um, but still um, the soul part of it is really important to to make that transition that we need. I, I agree with you completely I think that the soul part of everything is something that we lose touch with in our modern rush world and yet it's always there waiting for us to notice it and it's so wonderful that you're actually doing that with this place which would probably make the Tuckers very proud and very hopeful themselves. Yeah, so. uh, Findhorn, what a fascinating place. I, had, I wasn't aware that you had been there. That, that really is a place where I'd have to say that they've shown magic happening. They, they've been able to grow things in those pyramids, I understand, that really shouldn't be growing in those harsh climates in Scotland. Yeah, well, they were just really good at trusting and letting go and asking, uh, stepping aside from what they think has to happen and to opening to what the plants need and what the, and to, like, okay, we need something to grow these plants, and then the next day some manure would show up that, that someone else didn't want, and then they'd use that, and they would grow these huge cabbages as part of the lore. Mm -hmm. of, um, of Findhorn. Um, and nowadays they're really focused on being an eco-village as well, so they've got green roof buildings, they've got this rain uh, rainwater um, greenhouse where the dirty water comes in and it's filtered through a, a series of tubs of different plants and algae and then it comes out as um, not quite drinkable water but safe to, mm -hmm. safe to send back into the ocean. Um, mm -hmm. And just and everything they do, they just um, they take a moment, they hold hands for a second, and say, "Okay, what's their intention here? You know, what kind of what kind of um, they call them angels, but I sort of um, contextualize them as qualities. Like, what qualities do we want to bring into our work today? Mm -hmm. And then it just brings it brings the people together and makes everything really enjoyable. Well, it's absolutely generating the right energy, and that sounds like a very um, modern term, but it's not. Obviously, it's the it's the ageless term, and when you're talking about cleansing the water, of course that's a, an absolutely huge factor in every tradition, every one of the ancient traditions of China and the Kabbalah, and it's all there. You've got to cleanse the water. We are 68% water, and if our water energy is wrong, then everything is wrong about us. Yeah. So when, when we hear about climate change, we hear our politicians talking about climate change and what should we do about it and pulling out their hair and climate change to some extent is something we bring upon ourselves but it's also something that's happening that happens in cycles so with what you're doing what Finhorn is doing you find a way to go with it live with it accommodate to it not just change it um, we learn learn to live with what the changes are happening with climate change? Oh, yes, yeah. and you learn to how to live with nature and follow the cycles and listen to them. Yes, like when we disrupt, there are some limits to the cycles of nature. So, like mm -hmm. when we and we are big enough as human society to affect those cycles. So we do have to be mindful of what it means mm -hmm. to live within those limits, and that's really important. And sometimes. Um, it feels like, hey, does that mean we're not allowed to drive and I have to turn my thermostat down to 14? Uh -huh. Not quite. Like there, there are some ways that we can meet the same needs with using the new technologies and getting them into place. Um, you know, insulating your house more um, yeah. when new, when some new. Um, 
programs come online to help you insulate your attic, like take advantage of those and those kinds of things. And you can be just as comfortable and happy. You might make some different choices, but we can still live really comfortable lives um, with respecting those cycles and those limits of not using too much energy. Well, and the proof is in this place. The Tuckers, when they built it, obviously didn't have many of those comforts. And yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they used for insulation, but I'm sure that heating this place was a much more difficult proposition in those days. Yeah. than today. Yeah, well, we can't all heat with wood today and we'd chop no. down all our forests. No. So, so we do need some, uh, some new, new technologies. And mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And the will is there and the knowledge is there and the, definitely the energy is there with the new generation who are determined. Yeah, I think it is, it is a great turning point. Like uh, Joanne and Macy uses the word, the word, the term of it's the great turning. So the, yes. in some ways the world feels like it's all unraveling when you look at some of the the statistics on um, like uh, exponential species loss, exponential soil loss, exponential um, you know decline of the health of the oceans. It can get it's it feels like a big unraveling. But at the other on the same side on the other side of the coin, it's the great turning where we're changing our minds, we're raising our mm -hmm. consciousness, we're deciding. Well, this is really important. I'm going to think more globally. I'm going to be um, like a better human, like a better human race almost. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. And this is happening here in our own little Clarence Rockland. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> in this old house that has so many secrets that are just being tapped and discovered by Kara, the sensitive soul and the poetic being. Now, you, wrote, you said you wrote a poem. Yeah. Would uh, would you care to read it for for listeners? Because I think by now they're probably totally enchanted and hanging on your every word. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> um, yeah, on my first day um, as executive director of Tucker House, it was the Three Eye Summit. So this was a meeting in Ottawa where we brought lots of different groups together um, to talk about environmental sustainability, make plans, how do we work better together, and that was uh, hosted by Tucker House. So um, it was my first day, and I and I reflected a little bit and. Um, I wrote a poem. I just I didn't wasn't really planning to. It just kind of like popped into my journal, mm -hmm. and then um, there was a break in the in the program, and they said, "Oh, we need we've got five minutes spare. I'm gonna I'm just gonna tell you another joke." And I was like, "Oh my God, I don't want to hear another joke." You know, so I was like, "You know what? I have this poem." So I raised my hand. I said, "I'm just gonna do this." You know, and so I stood up and I read this poem to the crowd, and and it's turned out to really be some of the fundamental you know approaches that we take it. Um, at Tucker House as well. So I think it really embodies Tucker House and, and what, what, what all of us can uh, be together. I can't wait to hear it. All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so, let us be strength. Strong minds to understand and make a plan for a way forward. Strong hearts to hold strong under the weight of fear and shine light into the dark. Strong will to take commitment, to take action. Let us be love. Loving to ourselves. Loving to the forces that we think are blocking our way. And loving and grateful to the spirit of life. Let us dance in the fire, breathless and exultant and find in the ashes the diamonds of our souls. I think the ancestors would say miigwetch to that. Miigwetch. That was inspired, Kara. There is no doubt about it. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. And I can see why this has become something that guides the work of all the people who come through here. Well, Tuckers, I think that she's added something. <laughs> uh, we do need messages of hope these days. We have, uh, we have so much around us that we recognize as beauty and that we fear as something that we're losing. And yet you've come upon this place and you've brought a new breath of life to it and clearly lots of love. Your little baby was born during this whole process? Yes. Um, kind yeah. of like a little mascot? <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, when we were reflecting with our strategic plan in the first months of my tenure, um, we were we said, look, go out into the grounds and just reflect on what's the value that Tucker House has. You know, what's the value that it has to give. You know, and um, and I had sort of a feeling of being pregnant. You know, and giving birth to not just my daughter, but um, to sort of the concept of uh, something new and important and beautiful that we can um, bring into the world in this place. Um, and then Victoria is the sort of <laughs> physical <laughs> manifestation of that, and she is very special and a very um, uh, solid, wise soul, it, se it seems already. So uh -huh. I can imagine her growing up here and you know running the, some of the programs later and that sort of thing. I can too. <laughs> I can too. What a beautiful place. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're going to be, now that you've brought that beautiful energy into this place through things like your, your own imagination, your own poem, your own daughter, the people that you've gathered around you, and the money coming in from our very, very benevolent Trillium Foundation, you have great plans for this place that involve some professionals and I guess some volunteers. Yeah. And we'll be talking about that next because obviously there are great, great plans ahead going on overhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so all, all part of our vision of uh, being a hands-on sustainable demonstration center as mm -hmm. part of the retreat center is, uh, is part of how we're uh, upgrading the, the center and we're engaging volunteers such as um, history students, local people to help doing uh, painting. We have our eco-contractor, uh, Mike, Mike Perkowski, and, um, and Diana Brushy will be talking with us a little bit about um, her vision of uh, the history and the future of Tucker House. We should go upstairs, yes. Yeah. Upstairs where they've got the, uh, the family's bedrooms and mm -hmm. the servants' quarters, the, what used to be the servants' quarters. Mm -hmm. And all of this, which is now being brought into the quarters for the modern servants, right? <laughs> the servants of our hearts, yeah. The servants of our hearts, because all of us who will be coming here are serving this beautiful dream, which is eternal. My, really poetic in this place. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> You're helping me bring that out, so thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> All right, so I think we're going to take the break now, and we're going to continue the program upstairs in the bedroom. <laughs> you want to know what is happening at your Clarence Rockland Town Council Assembly? Mayor Marcel Guibar and his councillors are there to inform you about items that are being submitted and approved for your city. Conflicts, discussions, debates, and confrontations between the members on subjects that affect you. Don't miss the regular meetings of your town council on TVC22 or on the internet at www.tvc22.ca. So here we are in the master's bedroom, Master Tucker. So what is th this room looks a little sparse. You're going to be fixing this up to make it look like a master's room? Yes, Probably that's... put him to shame, <laughs> <laughs> embarrass him. Well, I hope not. <laughs> um, yeah, the Baptists were um, a bit modest, um, <laughs> but there also was the in the Georgian era at that time. There was a little bit of the sense of trying to impress as well, so we're balancing those things. Okay. So, um, so our history uh, student has been researching this, and he found that they really like to use. Um, rich colors like a rich blue meant that you were like royalty so we're uh -huh. going to brighten up the or make a richer more rich blue in, in mr uh -huh. tucker's room uh -huh. and um although trillium is has given us some budget for the decorating they are they're not going to pay for us to have the special extras right um so for those kinds of things that's where we're really asking for um some community help to um, so, for example, in Mr. Tucker's room, we'd like to have a really nice uh, day bed um, here, which gives us one more place to sleep, but also um, keeps the look of the room not as crowded 
as okay. it is right now. Okay. And then we'll also be putting, um, in this room we're going to focus in on um, all the entrepreneurial activities that the Tuckers did. We're going to have some learning displays about that because from this window you can see across the road to some of the um, other houses that they worked with in the general store and Mr. Tucker was the head of those enterprises. There was a general store across the street? Yeah. Is the building still there? Yeah. Oh, it's a house now. Yes. It's a home. So this is the uh, southwest exposure. So this is probably a very bright room. In the morning, yeah. Um, yes, in the morning, that's true. Because the sun would set over there, I guess. So yes, they were early risers, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be fun to decorate. And this will be done with the help of a lot of volunteers, hopefully. Yes because it will be meticulous work. Yeah, I'm, we're planning to do gold gilding up on, on the top, and I want to be up there with the paintbrush or whatever you use to yes. put on the gold gilding. One of those little stencils, perhaps, with yes. curly cues and designs. Oh, I don't know, what the, just on the, making that rim gold there. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'll be fun. All right, and across the hall is Mrs. Mrs. Tucker's room. They didn't sleep the in the same room. room so wow. <laughs> they were very proper. It worked. They still managed to make a few children. <laughs> All right, let's go over and see Mrs. Tucker's room. And here we are in Mrs. Tucker's room across the hall, which is uh, beautiful. I love yellow. I really love light, sunny yellow. <coughs> so this is where you're looking for some furniture and some things to recreate the mood. Yes, yes. we're envisioning a big, beautiful uh, four-post queen-sized bed in this room. Mm -hmm. um, so we'd like to raise a couple thousand dollars to be able to do that. Uh -huh. And then have uh, nice matching window dressings and put out some of the artifacts we have that are uh, ladies' dressing um, accessories, such as a silver um, handheld mirror and those kinds of things to give the feeling of uh, what a woman's life would be in those days. So these things will all be out whenever people come to visit. You're just going to trust them to. Well, we're going to have uh, we're having a new security system in oh, place, okay. and then we're going to uh, and we'll have to take a credit card uh, deposit before when people check in, and then a, and a check as they leave to make sure that everything is still in place when, of course. when you go. Of course. So we'll have the um, our procedures in check for that. The privilege of living in a palace has a price. <laughs> I understand. That's only fair. Well. I like it very much. And between the two rooms, there is a um, Well, room. we call it the prayer room, but sometimes we call it the rendezvous room. So let's go check that out. So the rendezvous room. Yes. This today would be the TV room, probably, or the computer room. Much better is the rendezvous room. <laughs> <laughs> so Mr. Tucker's house is on this side, and Mrs. Room. Tucker's room is on that side. So um, part of the story is that if they wanted to come and see each other they would come here to the rendezvous room maybe discuss the business of the day or maybe um, having a little intimate time we're not sure um, mm -hmm. exactly what it was used for and um, but now we like to use it more as a prayer room a silent reflection room so we're not sure if it's a sinful or a sacred room but uh, it's all sacred I guess <laughs> it's all sacred it is definitely and it's a beautiful room it's so cozy and I can't believe that there's no balcony out there. Yeah, it was in the original plans to have, it's called, it's called a widow's walk, and it's meant to walk out. Um, okay. But for some reason that part just never got built, and we, oh. see it, we see that an extension was built on the kitchen instead. So maybe they just had to make some choices with their budgets. Yes. Or it weren't infinite, with it, even with all their enterprising. No, they didn't have trillium in those days. <laughs> not, not the trillium would have necessarily kicked in for something like this. <laughs> Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. So, well, we're looking for some help in this room as well, about a thousand dollars to have this room dedicated to you or your family or your business. Mm -hmm. um, we would get a, a, a speaker system, um, some floor cushions to make it a cozy space for the morning, um, and uh, and restore this beautiful um, archway, which uh, we'll learn a bit more about in the history tour with uh, Diana. It's definitely classic work. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, now let's move on to, well, we don't really need to see the children's rooms, although there, there are two of those. Yeah, we don't have to, but um, we are also looking for donations uh, for each room. So on Then the let's go see them. Okay, so this is something like what my room would look like before I'd go away to camp every year, and then I'd come back and my parents would have it all fixed up. So this is definitely a before shot. 
I suspect that you want to put a little bit more money into it than my parents ever did. <laughs> What's coming up for this one? Yeah, well, we're hiring a decorator um, to help us figure out how to, how to keep as many beds as we have without it feeling as crowded. So we might end up with a few fewer beds, but then we'll have some trundles underneath and more options for people. So for this room, it's going to have the children's theme because um, the children were, it was the children's room, so we'll have some uh, educational items that they would have used at the time, um, some old toys, and, um, and then we're actually going to make some bug beds in this room. Um, so kids could stay here if their parents are in the other room, and uh, some kids could be here, or um, we're going to have a double bed on the bottom so an adult could stay, and you can put, just put your luggage up top if, uh, if you're not up for going up the stairs to the bed. Great idea. Yeah. You know, one thing I'm noticing, Kara, is mm -hmm. the floors don't creak. It's a sturdy old house. They're it's nice, big really pine, sturdy. Big, nice, big pine uh, beams down there that have were cut down from local trees. Yeah, trees on the property. Yeah. I'm impressed. Not what you'd expect. So, children's room one. Is there another children's room? There's a, the guest room. That, what the guest room. The way. All right. Yeah. Well, let's go see the guest room. Now. Mm -hmm. So here we are in the guest room. What are the plans for this little sweet place? Um, from this room, we can see out to the backyard, so we can see the solar panels and the nature trails, the forest with the nature trails in it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to focus here on the land use um, and some of the and using some of the interesting maps that we have. So um, the Tuckers did some hand-drawn maps of the property, as well as a really amazing um, historical treasure of um, an 1862 map of Upper Canada. So we have a few different grants in for that one to get it preserved in a special case and map it up on the wall. They did a map of Upper Canada, so they, they, were, his, they were geography buffs, or how's that? Um, I don't know, I think it would have been just something important that they would have in their planning for their enterprises, because they were between Montreal and um, oh, okay. Ottawa and Peterborough, they were, they go down for training, so I think just be something, and they were, they were, they, were, they valued education, so, um, you know, just having a map up is something you'd like with your business, I think, that's my imagination of it. Yes, yeah. it makes sense, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so this is, for this room you're looking for um, yes, help another, with painting, furniture of any kind? Yeah, um, $1,000 donation just to help uh, with the map, with the, the right. casing of the map will be oh, quite okay. expensive, so All right. it has to be, um, you know, museum grade because it's a paper specimen. And again, if somebody donates $1,000 or you get smaller donations and you put the plaques on the door? Yes, so mm -hmm. um, if two people donate 500 for this room, we'll put them together, or if you want to have your exclusive name on the door, then you donate the whole 1,000. All right, so now we're going towards the servants' quarters down this very spooky corridor because it's <laughs> Halloween coming up and everything is spooky and it's very narrow and there are stairs and where are we going? Where are we going, Kara? <laughs> uh, well, now we're transitioning into the side of the house that wasn't as fancy. It was built for the servants. Um, but we've given it some modern touches with um, our last Trillium Green Design funding where we have modern um, bathrooms with water-saving um, faucets and low-flush toilets. But they're just nice. Oh, very nice. For our guests, we want, we want them to have the com modern Something comforts. so comforting about having modern bathrooms. <laughs> yeah. um, and down in the servants' room, uh, we're not doing as much, but we're just going to put some bunk beds in so we can have lots of uh, kids groups staying, you know, 20 scouts come and stay here quite often, so we want to have a fun spot for them with nice drapes and, um, and bedding. And, and, um, we Wonderful. Might be, yeah, we might be making the, some of the uh, bunk beds out of reclaimed pallets, so part of our environmental angle on that one. Good. And this is the way down to the kitchen. Yes, yeah, so we have some narrow stairs here for the servants would have used going down to serve the breakfast for the uh -huh. deckers. So, Kara, when we were filming last week, I thought that that was the end of our interview. And today we brought it, managed to bring up so many other matters. And I have a feeling that this is going to be just one series of interesting discoveries after another over the coming years. I won't even leave it just a month. Yeah, well, I hope you'll come back sometimes when we're ripping up some walls and see some of the disaster mistakes as well as the, uh, like, yeah. those like those renovation shows and then the amazing after shot. I would love to ever show everyone that story. Oh, I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea because you've got so many people involved in this and they should all be celebrated, yeah. honored, not just you. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. That's the spearhead of it all. Yeah, there's nothing happening without all the people helping. So, yeah. Wow, well, it's a team effort. So thank you very much for inviting us in. And thank you so much for your kind interviewing. Absolutely. Enjoying every minute of it. So that's going to be it for our episode today. 
And our next episode is going to be talking to some of the trades, some of the experts, some of the historians who are all putting their piece into this whole puzzle and bringing it into the 22nd century. 22nd century. <laughs> 22nd. I have a feeling it's still going to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Kara. Thank you.